If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. Here, not with a deck tech, not with gameplay for you, but I will be showing off my gauntlet. This is the Cons of Tarkir Holiday Gift Box. Shoutouts Christopher Pearson, by the way, for this. I finally remembered it was you, so thank you. Uh, this is the container that I use to hold my gauntlet. Now, for those that don't know what that is, a gauntlet is, if you will, a deck box. It's a collection of decks, all from the same format. You can just take one out and play it, put it right back in. You can, your friends can. You see Pro Tour gauntlets and other sorts of gauntlets like Legacy on Magic Online. Well, I made one for Legacy in person, in real life. Now, this box is able to hold 12 decks. You'll notice here that we have three columns. Each one can hold four. The dividers that came with, along with some other dividers that I've gotten from deck boxes and elsewhere. Uh, so, with these 12 decks, I actually had a bit of a philosophy. I could have just thrown in whatever I wanted, but this wasn't just for me to play, it was for others as well. And so for the sake of, say, for instance, format diversity, I put some restrictions on myself. Instead of just putting, you know, say, four different variants on Infect or whatever, I made sure that I covered one of each color, one of each mono color, asterisk, you'll see in just a second. So we'll start out with those. Our first deck is shoutouts to Nikachu MTG. Actually, before I get there, and I, I spoiled it, so I might as well show you uh, some things you'll want to keep in a gauntlet, regardless. So, I use rock paper scissors cards to determine who goes first, and I use two sets <laughs> actually, so that my opponent and I can play our own, and we don't have a we have a chance of tying, which can add drama or just make a funny scenario or what have you. Next, you can see from the reflection, you can actually just see them. I have a bunch of dice. I believe it's 10 dice altogether, 10 d6, uh, which helps here or it helps in role-playing. Uh, there are some tokens that are featured for the individual decks, but in case I need tokens otherwise, you can use whatever you want. You can use uh, just <laughs> business cards, stuff out of your wallet, you can use your bus pass, you can use cards from any game you want. Just it doesn't matter, right? It's, it's whatever you choose. I choose some Yu-Gi-Oh cards, so this little mm, PG, and some broken bamboo swords. <laughs> Why? Because this little mm, and I just find this card funny. It's actually not useless in the game. There's another card that makes it do something, but that's, that's all. So, on to the decks themselves. We start off with, as I showed you before, Merfolk. Now, this is a pretty stock list. I won't go through the whole list for you. Just Merfolk's Vials. No real draw power outside of... Um, I just drew a blank. Uh, Silver... There we go. Silver Gale Adept. There we are. Uh, no Brainstorms, no Ponders, nothing like that. But it does hold Counter Magic and Force of Will and Daze and Chalice of the Void, interestingly enough. Now, for this deck, in addition to, of course, Basic Island, I run Wastelands, I run Cavern of Souls, I run Mutavault, or Mutavault, however you say it. I hear it both ways. And then, of course, the sideboard, you know, for whatever that's worth. By the way, I intentionally made it, made the gauntlet diverse so that a sideboard couldn't be, um, I've heard the term inbred, though, inbred, I don't think I like that one very much. Let's say, too self-referential. It wouldn't refer to this gauntlet too much. It's meant to be general. That said, everything has an answer to everything, even if it's not the greatest answer in the world. Uh, next, as you can kind of see a little bit, we have Death and Taxes. So, Merfolk for blue. For white, we have Death and Taxes. And I swear, if you say that this isn't mono-white because it runs one Horizon Canopy... Mmm, no. <laughs> okay. So we run one Thalia. This is, of course, as you'd imagine, a recruiter version. Uh, no Palace Jailer anymore. I found that Miracles was where it shined the most, and we don't have Miracles anymore. I run Spirit of the Labyrinth for all the blue running around. I should, before I move on any further, give this little heads up, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. You may notice, you may not notice if the resolution's low, but if you look really closely, 
on 1080p or whatnot, you can kind of see that's a proxy. Why on earth am I proxying a Thalia? Well, I've actually proxied everything in here that isn't a basic land. And if you're wondering why, you, you've seen videos on my channel, even with my having to sell my collection and some of it being stolen. Dylan, you and I were still working on that. Um, rest in peace, Judge Promo Noble Hierarchs. I hope to see you soon. Uh, other than that, the, the reason that they're foiled, or not foiled, wow, the reason they're pro I had the foil promos on the mind, that they're proxied, even for cards that I have, is because once people know that, there's no incentive for them to steal it. Because if you steal it and you get caught, you've stolen something that's a crime, yada yada. But if you don't get caught, all you got was a bunch of proxies. There's no value in here. So it's a disincentive for people. Uh, the sideboard... Oh, hey, <laughs> classy germ token. I need to draw a monocle for this guy. A monocle and a cane. I'm working on it. A uh, bunch of one-ofs because it's a recruiter list. Uh, except for the non-creatures and two containment priests. I feel that I need it that much. Fairy Macabre, recruiter, trying out Gideon, works in some matches. Uh, double Path, double Rest in Peace, double Graft Digger's Cage. Yeah, we, uh, we do not want to have to deal with graveyard decks. Uh, all. Okay, so, blue and white. Our next one should be green if I... Yes, green. Okay, and you can guess what mono green is. Mono green. This is elves. I say mono green, not because of Deathrite Shaman, although obviously a black ability in here, but because there are sideboard answers, actually, that do use black, such as Thoughtseize, Cabal Therapy. Um, if we want to count Leovold, although often we're getting them off of Green Sun Zenith or Natural Order. Uh, but yeah, this is just a, it, in the main board it's a regular rush list, I'm not playing control to start, we can do that in the sideboard. Um, getting our Rins Run, Packmaster, our Gaddick Teague, our Elder Scale, <laughs> Elder Scale, yes. Um, scavenging Ooze, we have Abrupt Decays, yada yada, you get the idea, and there's the one of GTA for certain matches. Uh, the idea behind this deck, uh, there are a number of philosophies for it, mine is super heavy on the combo, because I think that that gives it the best game one percentage, and it works in any meta. It works regardless of what you're up against. Um, you don't have to make a meta read, and I rather like the consistency of it. Uh, there are decks that run main boards, say, Leovolds, or Rins Runs, or Scoozes, or what have you. I, d I don't agree with those. Uh, the next is, uh, so that makes me like, I, my inspiration is drawn from Ross Merriam, in other words. Well, that's his preference. Two crater hoofs, go. Uh, next, of course, is Burn, the easiest deck in here to play by, a, I think, a substantial margin. And that's not just me saying it, that's not a diss. Uh, watching the videos of our Legacy Gauntlet games over at Tapstart, Burn and Merfolk are the two that get picked the most for beginners. And it, it makes sense, right? Now, sequencing is important, and that's certainly underrated. Uh, but it's a pretty stock list. Um, what, three flame rifts, I believe? I, yeah, I, th I think it's three flame rifts and four price. Oh, and one grim lava mancer. But other than that, it's stock. So, and then unfortunately, burn for lack of draw power doesn't get much it can do in the sideboard. But ensnaring bridge is huge. Firecraft is huge. Uh, Grav digger's cage. Uh, I didn't just do a bunch of variants on burn spells, but most of them are variants on burn spells. <laughs> for the right match. Next, for the last one, now what is a mono black deck in Legacy? You might know, it's Pox. This is the closest thing that I have to a pure prison deck. Uh, Nether Spirit as the creature, I'm not running a blood gas version or multiple spirits or anything like that. Nether Void, uh oh, upside down cards. <laughs> the Abyss, yeah, Curse Scroll is a win condition, Nether Spirit, and Mistress Factory. Preferably that art. <laughs> and then this card, oh, smallpox. <laughs> you are, you are amazing. You are seeing the look on people's face when you can go turn one, swamp, or whatever, or Borg, Dark Ritual, Thought Sea, smallpox. Uh, and you still have lands to go, or, or something crazy like that. It's maybe not optimal. I'm looking at you, Sinkhole. <laughs> you might be a little bit better in that spot, but... Oh, when it when it happens, it just feels so cruel. The Tabernacle. 
just a one of. Now, I could have run the black green version of this deck, which essentially has the ability to kill much more quickly by playing the combo, which is the same as in lands. You go and get Dark Depths, Thespian Stage, you have Crop Rotation, uh, Black gives you access to Dark Confidant, stuff if you want to, cards like those. Uh, Life from the Loam. You, you basically put lands and pox together, and that would have been possible, but otherwise there wouldn't be a true prison deck in here. And there are people in our meta that like to play prison decks. It's not my favorite archetype, but every now and then I like to, and we have one person who fell in love with this deck. I'm looking at you, Margaret. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> on <laughs> the sideboard. Chains of Mephistopheles. If you actually know what this does, congratulations, you've been playing Magic for 10 years. Well, no, not 10, but you get the idea. Uh, we can go more into the, yeah, sure, we'll go more into the side deck, just so that you can pause it and see. Knight of Souls Betrayal. <laughs> I, I had my coolest moment in Magic, I think, with Knight of Souls Betrayal from my opponent on the board. I still lost that game, but I killed a Tarmogoyf with Become Immense. So, uh, I'll take it. <laughs> it gave me a nice little story. Uh, now, once we've covered every mono color, I should note there is not a colorless deck in here. There very well could be, and there are a number of options. There's Mud, there's Eldrazi Aggro, there's Stacks, there's Affinity, I, and there's probably more. I'm not aware of any colorless cloud post list other than Mud, but there could very well be something like, I don't, I would not be surprised. Uh, but I'm not running a colorless deck in here. I could, maybe I should. I don't know what I would replace, say, Eldrazi, for instance. That's seeing a decent amount of play in Legacy. Thank you, Chalice, after all. Uh, I don't know what I'd replace it with. Maybe it's worth inclusion. I also admit I very much dislike Eldrazi as a deck. Not even for the deck itself, not for the mechanics, but for the flavor of the Battle for Zendikar and Oath of the Gatewatch Eldrazi. I hate Theros 2.0. I hate the monster side of them. I'd rather see more Lovecraft and whatnot. So, admittedly, I have a personal bias, but I also just don't like the the playstyle, and I think it's a little redundant with some other decks that we have in here, and I don't know what I'd take out. But if we had access to more, say a 13th deck, then yes, Eldrazi would probably be the one to make this spot. Okay, that said, I also wanted to cover some other uh, representation in the format. We've covered every color. Now, I wanted to have one, at least one, but one, turn one deck in the format, and... I chose Charbelcher. I could have picked Oops All Spells. For, uh, no, I, <laughs> I chose Charbelcher. It seems of, and this is not something I've seen mathematically, but from personal experience, from watching videos, from playing the decks, from just anecdotal evidence, in other words, it seems to be the most consistent turn one deck. And that makes sense on a number of fronts, actually. The fact that it can go off with Charbelcher or Empty the Warrens in and of itself makes it more resilient against Force of Will decks. Because, okay, so let's say you want to go off with, for with Goblin Charbelcher. The opponent knows that and is incentivized to wait as long as possible so they can hit the Charbelcher itself and X for 2 you, where X is the highest number they can possibly get. I say X for 2 because Force of Will pitch a blue card. On the other hand, with Empty the Warrens, if they wait too long, you might prematurely play an Empty the Warrens in anticipation of Force of Will, and maybe it wouldn't have been as explosive, but now their Force of Will does much, much less. It does basically nothing. So, and of course you have Burning Wish to get yourself back in the game. Uh, because of that, I prefer to play Charbelcher. It's a turn one deck that can play a longer game, whereas something like Oops All Spells, I don't know how you play more than one turn. Unless you do the transformational sideboard and transform into Charbelcher, in which case you're playing Charbelcher. Okay, and then for the sideboard, I actually do want to show this one off really quickly. Just give me one quick sec. Um, so, it's a wish board for the most part. Well, I say most part, it's eight cards. Uh, Empty the Warrens, win condition, Goblin War Strike, supplemental win condition, Telemann Performance, win condition, and other. Diminishing Returns, reload. Pyroclasm, I don't want to die. Reverent Silence, <laughs> Leyline of the Void, and Rest in Peace, get out. Well, no, no, no. No, actually. Oh, what was this for? What was this for? 
Because this deck doesn't really use the graveyard. Um, oh, pfft. yeah, because I, ah, I can't think of what, <sighs> oh my goodness, this is eating me up. I mean, I, I know there's Eidolon of the Great Rebel, but other than that, I can't think of anything that just, well, there's no rule of law in this format. Eidolon of Rhetoric? No. Whatever, I'll, I'll think of it. I remember there being a reason I put that in. And then Shattering Spree, uncounterable artifact removal. You can counter the original, but the copies aren't cast, they're just put on the stack. So it can get around Chalice, for instance. Or a Thorn of Amethyst, or what ha whatever, what have you. Uh, trash for Treasure, get your uh, Belcher back out of the yard. And then our anti-blue, this is the only time we ever side boys for blue decks. Uh, Pyroblast, three of, and Xantid's form, four of. Oh yeah. So I just wanted to show that off because I, w I was proud of that sideboard. Uh, I like playing a wishboard. I don't do transformational belcher, and I dedicate seven slots. I only ever sideboard for one match. Char Belcher needs to win game one for that reason, because um, odds get worse as you go on. Odds get worse in later games. Next we have a graveyard deck. I could have picked Reanimator. I could have picked one of the Dredge variants. I picked LED Dredge. So <laughs> wow. Jeez, I would love to dredge into that. On the other hand, they're at the bottom. Yeah, so, um, Dredge. The, one of the boogeymen of the format, right next to Belcher. So, they're in good company with one another. I'm seeing a lot of redundancy. Hey, three Narcomabas. All right. So, just showing that off a little bit. All right. And then the sideboard. Abrupt Decay. Deals with Containment Priest and Rest in Peace. Nature's Claim deals with uh, Layla and the Void and Rest in Peace. Ashen Rider, obviously. Sneak and Show and you can reanimate to deal with stuff. Dark Blast for a bunch of little creatures. See Infect, for instance, here. Uh, Elisha oh yeah! <laughs> Speaking of little creatures, just wipe out uh, Swarm decks in general. Uh, Firestorm, because it can also deal with Containment Priest and just low to the ground decks, hate bears, that sort of thing. Importantly, discarding is part of the cost, so even if they counter it, you still discard. Iona to shut down combo decks. Leyline of the Void is a 4 of for the Mirror and other graveyard decks. And Nature's Claim, again, rest in peace in Leyline. Oh, by the way, I should note in here, in case I move through too quickly, the reanimator targets in the main board. I don't have Grizzlebrand, I have one Flame Kinzella and one Flayer of the Hatebound. Um, so that's how you go off in this particular version. Grizzlebrand could be added, I have not in this one. It might be nice though. And then there's one other thing I wanted to definitely have in here before I went into my whatever I felt like. Uh, slots, and that is I wanted to have one Delver deck. Uh, now, this one I, I took some liberty with, some creative liberty. I wanted to also have one homebrew in here. I know, I know, no, don't turn off, don't, don't go away. Uh, my homebrew is Esper Delver, and it's actually rather similar if you've seen uh, Jeskai Delver. Just replace... <laughs> <laughs> Replace the red with black. No, kidding, Sherlock. But, no, in all seriousness, uh, your creatures are Delver of Secret, Stoneforge Mystic, I count Batterskull and Jitae in the creature slots, because they don't flip Delver and they work with Stoneforge. They work with the creatures, so I count them there. And then, two Lingering Souls. Slightly improves the chances of flipping a Delver, but more importantly, is great against Force of Will decks. You <laughs> they use two cards to counter your half a card. And then the rest is, is pretty stock. Actually, there's not much that black gets used for. In the main board, it's flashing back Lingering Souls and Fatal Push. When we go to sideboard, it gives us access to some uh, Hand Attack, for instance. In... Well, there's Disenchant. There's Meddling Mage, which is a 4 of for me. If you know the meta, Meddling Mage is great. Or can be great. Mind Break Trap as your fifth Force of Will for certain matches. See Belcher, for instance. Uh, Relic for Graveyard Hate, Rest in Peace. Retribution of the Meek. Uh, does not hit anything in this deck, actually. Uh, it hits bad, it hits your own Batter Skull token, but we can get that back. Uh, it's double Submerge, Sword of Feast and Famine, and Fire and Ice, Zealous Persecution. I must have taken the Thought Seizes out, actually. Let's see. What was in there previously? I think it must have been, um... Hmm. I, I don't know, actually. I think it must have been Disenchant, but... 
Otherwise, I wouldn't have any artifact removal at all. Artifact or enchantment removal in the deck. Okay, so that might have been it. So I thought I had some hand attack. Maybe, maybe not. Oops. Oops. But that's an option. That is one benefit that you can get from playing in black. Which is great for combo matches, yada yada, you know the drill. Of course, you also have Force of Will and Daze and Spell Pierce and Stifle, so you may not need Thoughtseize in addition to all of that. Now, for these four, I got to pick, again, whatever I wanted. I wanted there to be a disproportionate amount of blue representation in here because, you know, legacy. And so far, <laughs> I only have, let's say, Merfolk and Delver. That's it for blue deck so far. I'm not counting Dredge, <laughs> just because you have Narco Amoeba and Cephalic I'm not counting Charbelcher, just because you have Gitaxian Probe. Uh, no. <laughs> no, that is not how this works. Um, that said, the first one, after I get past these, is actually not a blue deck. But this one is especially fun. This is maybe the most fun deck in here to me. Sometimes it's in fact, sometimes it's lands. Good old lands. This is uh, gruel lands, punishing lands. No black in here, although we could. We could add black. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I know that there's a bunch of little micro tweaks that you can make to the deck, but the engine is the same. I should note, I keep Bajukabog and Caracas in the main board. I, I know that isn't something that's always done, but that's my very, very strong preference, to shore up matches otherwise. You, you just keep the other in the sideboard, but I'd rather, you know, the, the combo match is so bad for lands in game one, anything I can do. Being able to wipe their grave with Bajukabog at instant speed with crop rotation, or deal with an Emrakul that's come down off of show and tell, anything I can do. I will do. So then we fight the blue decks with Boil. We've, we have a bunch of slots in here for combo height, so three Chalice of the Void, which hurts us a little, but not much. Uh, three Crossing Grip, four Spear of Resistance, and another Spear of Resistance, because we can't run one more. We have Thorn of Amethyst. And then two Tireless Trackers. Yeah, once they slide out all of their removal, it turns out Tireless Tracker on turn two is pretty sick. It's, it's pretty cool. Okay. I know it's a lot more detailed than that, but there are experts that pilot this deck that could go into more, Jarvis Yu, I believe, who could go into more detail about it. It's my understanding that once they aren't able to remove it against long game decks, it just grinds out so much card advantage. And of course, bear in mind, you can replace Investigate Draws with uh, Dredges from Life in the Loam, and it just gets, it, it gets out of hand. Okay, back into blue decks. We have Show and Tell. <laughs> Good old Show and Tell. Now, I should note, mine is a syncretic build here. So I, I guess it's a homebrew, but only a little. Uh, there are some that just run pure Sneak and Show. And then there are some that run a Cunning Wish deck that usually has Omniscience in the main. Uh, and then they can Cunning Wish for whatever, like release the ants or a whole little wishboard package. Mine does not have Omniscience, but does have Cunning Wish. And therefore it has a wishboard. Uh, it's something I've been experimenting with and having some success with, though. Bear in mind that my meta is not very um, adept at Legacy, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, Nonetheless, I've, I've found it to be awfully exciting, engaging, and I like having the, op having the options, even though it is rather slow. Cunning Wish is admittedly a slow card at 3 mana, in a deck that can turn one show and tell into Emrakul. <laughs> uh, but of course, because you are a blue deck, you have the ability to control with cards like Force of Will and Spell Pierce. You can, keep the, you can make the game go on long if you need to. Now for that wish board, quick deck tech time I suppose, the only one you can't wish out is Blood Moon, which is a 3 of, which you probably need to be a 3 of. I've ordered the rest not alphabetically, but by what they do, I believe. Okay, so, wow. Um, Pyroblast as a, an additional counterspell if you need it. Ravenous Trap, Fight Your Graveyard Decks, Sudden Shock, Uncounterable Creature Kill. Well, uncounterable now that counterbalance is out of the format since top is out of the format. Uh, surgical Extraction, more Graveyard Hate. And it's 
I guess, able to take it out of the deck completely. Through the Breach, if you can't find Sneak Attack or Show and Tell, you can just get through the Breach and haste it in that way. It is an instant, after all. Flusterstorm, more counter magic, for Storm cards especially. Could That could have been Mind Break Trap. Lo and behold, we have Mind Break Trap. Um, there's some situations you want one or the other. Echoing Truth, deal with problem permanence. Mind Break Trap, Belcher, or <laughs> Storm. Wipe Away, also deal with problem permanence. Uncounterably. Intuition, find whichever card you need. If you have, say, a show and tell or a sneak attack and you need an Emrakul or a Grizzlebrand, this will get it. Of course, vice versa is also true. If you have your creature and you need the other one, you can get you can get it with intuition. Yay! Volcanic Fallout, uncounterable mass creature kill. Kozlek's Return, also creature kill, but uh, notice the cost. Sometimes that actually makes a difference. Having two colorless there. After all, you have Ancient Tomb and City of Traitors in the deck. Okay, and with that, that is Sneak and Show. The way that I've the way that I'm running it. I've been trying it out. I rather like it. Maybe that's not right though. Maybe there's a better end one show and tell wanted to lag behind. <laughs> show and tell became ran and hide run and hide for this one. Flavor text win. Alright, next we have uh, Four Color Leovold. This is Leovold Red. Uh, just to differentiate it from the ones that run uh, Swords of Plowshares and Stoneforge Mystic. Although this doesn't use much red, uh, in the main board at least, there is a one of Colagon's Command, a one of Sudden Shock, speaking of which, a one of Sudden Shock, and... Honestly, that might be all of the red in the main board. If I'm remembering, there's not a lightning bolt in here. Um, that said, we do have some sideboard answers, and I'll flip through this really quickly. You can pause it. There's Is It Staticaster? Pyroblast. It's one of the bigger ones. That probably should go up to a two of, actually, or one pyro, one red elemental blast. I uh, well. I'm also considering a Dak Faden, to be honest. Though Dak Faden doesn't give you card advantage on its own, it gives you a lot of selection, but this deck doesn't really take advantage of the graveyard as well as, say, uh, Dak Faden and Reanimator, if you've seen Grixis Reanimator. Um, but in that case, if I'm running Dak Faden, you do two Pyroblast. Uh, and then, the one you've all been waiting for. Yep, we, we have Infect. <laughs> Lo and behold, we have good old Infect. My list is fun. Um, I'm only running two Vines of Asswood, but I'm running four Gitaxian Probes. I love information. I love being able to know whether or not it's safe to go off. I run a double crop rotation deck. Um, let's see. Only four Glistener Elves, four Noble Hierarchs, four Blighted Agents, four Ink Moth Nexi, Nexuses. Nexopodes. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Wasteland in the main board is a one of. It hits Tabernacle and Maze and that sort of thing. So, Bajuka Bog, again, crop rotation. Dryad Arbor, Vice Liliana. The fourth Force of Will in the sideboard is one in, uh, three in the main, uh, the fourth one's in the side for combo decks. Sometimes, this is the kind of deck where the blue counts, the blue card count isn't terribly high, and also. I don't, I don't know. It's, um, it's good, but Infect is the kind of deck that especially, how do you say, Days is better? Days only is a one for one. I mean, you are returning a land to your hand, but you're going to get to play that again later. Force of Will is a two for one in a deck that doesn't do that as well. It doesn't do that optimally. I, I don't know how best to explain that, but this is something I'm, I'm sure Tom Ross, who also does this, has talked about in more detail. It's something I've experienced, but I don't know that I know how to say it very well. Just that, while it's obviously a very good card, it's not so good that you necessarily want to see four. I think in my list, I only have 17, 16 or 17 blue cards in the main board. I have to go to side to increase the count a bit. And that's counting Blighted Agent, of course, and Gitaxian Probe. One's a creature, one usually cycles itself, so... Ugh. Uh, Graft Digger's Cage, Elves and Graveyard Decks, Hydroblast, yay! <laughs> deal with red deal with red removal and 
burn and what have you. Um, Caracas for Emrakul, largely. Uh, Yay, Crescent and Grip for uncounterable artifact removal. Maybe a little less relevant now, but it's fine. This one maybe should not be in here. This is for some Delver list, not all, and for Eldrazi. Uh, Infect has an awfully hard time with Eldrazi, and you may be noticing that mana cost means that it loses to Chalice anyway on the draw. So it's maybe not even all that great against Eldrazi, but Tarmogoyf gets big enough, it, it doesn't untap. Delver, of course, is a 3-2, or in Sexual Aberration, doesn't untap. A lot of the Eldrazi are big enough that they don't untap. Uh, Reality Smasher, I'm looking at you. Thought Nuts here, I'm looking at you. So this can be useful there if you get it to go off. That being said, eh, I don't know. Um, maybe this one needs to be replaced. I'm looking for suggestions. <laughs> I have a few ideas, but I'm looking for suggestions. So, Mind Break Trap, same reason you saw it earlier. This shores up Belcher and other Storm decks, combo decks. Uh, to Rest in Peace, Fight Graveyard decks. One of the advantages to having white, I have a Savannah on my list after all. Uh, two Swords to Plowshares. If you're not running white, you can run Submerge, but that's a little situational. Your opponent needs to be running a deck with Forest. And then one Viridian Corruptor for if I need to increase the creature count and deal with artifacts. So, for example, I'll bring it in against Burn. They'll keep removing my creatures. I'll have another one out. If they play in Snaring Bridge, I can blow it up. You get the idea. So, that is Infect, and that is the Gauntlet. This is something I'm actually rather proud of. If, for whatever reason, I end up getting another gift box, if it's given to me or if I purchase one, yeah, right. But if, if something changes in the not too distant future, and I get to, and I get another of these, I will gladly add more decks. Um, I actually might make a gauntlet for another format, but or I might just let the vintage gauntlet be part of this, and more legacy decks also be part, uh, because there aren't that many vintage decks relative to a lot of other formats. Standard changes too often, even modern changes probably too often. Uh, but Legacy is here to stay. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe if I just have a bunch of room, put in a couple commanders as well I can walk around with. But again, full proxy, so that no one who knows that would steal it. There's no reason to. And if, they, if someone doesn't know it and they do steal it, I'm not out much of anything. I'm out a box, which has sentimental value, but it's a box. Um, and a bunch of market cards that are inside these sleeves. Oh, oh no, I'll be out of rat. I'll be out of Momo rat. Whatever will I do? Not Momo rat, rat Pierre. It was Momo rat in Japan. Whatever, who cares? Um, <laughs> if you're watching this video, probably not you. I don't know. Alright, so that's it. Take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye-bye.